Hello, welcome to my series of videos on chemistry. In this video, we're going to talk about matter and mass versus weight. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about what are some uh, properties of the states of matter and uh, physical and chemical change. So, chemistry is the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. And matter, in, in, in a science sense, is anything that takes up space and that has mass. So we kind of have to talk about what mass is because it's part of our understanding of what matter is. So just think of matter as stuff. Stuff has some sort of substance. It's made up of something that, 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 that gravity will attract. So there's like mass there. And then it also has to take up space. And a substance is a form of matter that has a definite uh, composition and distinct properties. So that means it, it's kind of like a, a, a regular thing. It's not like two separate things. It's one thing. Um, what are some examples of substances versus uh, stuff that would be, say, more than one substance? Well, a substance generally would be something that was a, 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 an element, and we have to define that at some point, which is something that's made of only one kind of atom. Or it could be sort of a, a compound. So substances uh, would be like water. Okay, that would be a substance. Gold would be a substance. Iron would be a substance. Okay? Iron oxide would be a substance. But what would not be? Think about that. How about... Salt water. See, that's a mixture of substances. There's lots of stuff in there. More than one thing. More than one thing. That those things can be isolated from one another, which makes it, it different from a substance. Um, say, milk. Again, waters, fats, proteins, all many substances in milk. And each one uh, somewhat can be isolated from one another. So that's the difference between something that's pure substance, which would be the first one, and these things would be mixtures. You have to classify those a little further later on, but this is a good start. Okay, so mixtures is a combination of two or more substances. And uh, the, in the mixture, the two substances retain their own identity. So they don't chemically react to make a new substance. They don't alter their basic composition to form a new substance. The different substances may intermingle, but each small unit of the substance remains um, essentially the same, which is what, what the difference is. So homo a homogeneous mixture is when the composition is uniform throughout. So, like, if I had, like, a beaker, and, like, each dot represents, like, a water molecule, so there would be tons of these dots, and I'm not going to make tons because I don't have the time, and uh, it would just get messy. But they would be very, very close to one another, um, moving around. Um, and let's say we had some uh, something dissolved in the water, for example, say... Um, Acetic acid molecules, or, or something of that nature, maybe, maybe sodium chloride um, or ethylene glycol. Let's say ethylene glycol is red. Another substance, it would be intermingled, but whatever makes up the little red dot that is ethylene glycol does not come apart. And there may be many atoms that make up that molecule. And there may, and as we know, each dot is an is an O in two H's. You know, if you run it, um, water is H2O. So these, these little cartoons are pretty basic, uh, but they, they represent more complex things. So that, that blue dot is an H2O, and, and this red dot is a, uh, a, a more complex molecule called ethylene glycol. 
which I won't write the formula for right now. But that would represent a molecule with, with you know, more atoms. But the point is that the, the C's and the O's and the H's that are in ethylene glycol don't come apart from one another. And the H's don't come apart from the O's. Um, that means the two substances retain their characteristics. Now, what makes this homogeneous is that the ethylene glycol is kind of evenly dispersed. And how can we tell if a mixture is homogeneous? Well, usually we can tell uh, if a liquid solid mixture is homogeneous is if we can see through it. Um, so you can see through usually salt water. If you don't mix too much salt in, then it falls to the bottom. That's a homogeneous mixture. A heterogeneous mixture would be where the composi composition is not uniform throughout. So something where you'd see like little bits of something floating, floating in the liquid, that would be characteristic of a heterogeneous mixture. So if I mix sand in water, I get like a pile of sand, little bits of sand, and I get the water molecules you know, around it, but it's not uniform, and it will separate. And now, right now, we've just talked about liquid-solid mixtures. Other mixtures can be homogeneous. Every gas mixture, what do you think about a gas mixture? A mixture of two gases, do you think that homogeneous or heterogeneous? Uh, always homogeneous, pretty much. Why? Particles and gases are really, really far apart, so they don't really exert significant forces on each other. So other gas particles can easily kind of fit in the gaps, and so gas is always pretty much mixed completely. Okay, so when you have a gas-gas, it's homogeneous. Um, a heterogeneous might be like a gas-solid mixture. Solids don't often dissolve in gases, so like smoke and air, yeah, why do you see the smoke? Well, they're little bits of solid particles that the light bounces off to, off of and goes into your eye. Okay, that's why you see it. So you know, he's like, if the air, which is in itself a mixture of nitrogen, oxygen, water, carbon dioxide, and other stuff, okay, but the air is a homogeneous mixture, in the air, we also, so the blue represents like, it could represent uh, many different kinds of gas particles. Um, uh, and maybe the smoke is like, you know, little bits that don't dissolve. You know that it will settle. You know, you won't see the smoke in the air forever. Yes, it disperses, but it, it settles, okay? It's a heterogeneous mixture. You can see it. You can't see through it. If you point a, a light through smoke, you actually see the beam, and that indicates it's a heterogeneous mixture. Likewise, if you shine a beam through what a, a glass with a liquid in it, and, and that liquid has a solid mixed in, if you can see the beam in the liquid, that indicates that there's particles that are not dissolved, and that would make it a heterogeneous mixture, okay? So maybe I should do that. So like, like a, a, a really common one that a chemistry teacher might do, okay? They might like take some salt water, and you'll see, um, and then take like the laser pointer. Oh man, this is bad. Crude, crude. Okay, take the laser pointer. Ooh, I'm gonna draw a laser pointer. Rectangle. All right. So there's a, like your laser pointer, and you shine it. And you just see like a little red dot here, a little red dot here, and maybe a red dot on the other side of the wall. Okay. The the reason is is that there's nothing in the air between the glass, so there's nothing to, for the light to reflect off of. The air is a homogeneous mixture of gases. Okay. It bounces off the glass, which is a solid, but then it goes through. Some of that light goes through the glass. That's why you see the dot because the, the glass is there. Some of it bounces off. It goes through the liquid mixture of salt and water, but you don't see the beam. That's a homogeneous mixture. But if you take the same thing, and I dare not try to draw this again, so I'm going to copy and paste it. Yeah. 
All right. Oh, I lost the tip. Great. All right. Ooh, it doesn't belong there, does it? Let's move me down. Oh, no. All right. Come on. Today. Hello. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. Look at every size. It's not going to be really kind of correct. Okay. So now, if I take it and, like, I take a glass or a beaker of water and I just put three drops of milk in it. What I see now is I see a dot here and a dot here, but I also see the beam inside. And the beam is reflecting off the undissolved milk particles. Milk doesn't dissolve in water, uh, okay? Some of, most of milk is water, but the other particles in the mixture that is milk Many of them don't because there's fat in milk, which is not very soluble in water. And there are some proteins in milk that are not very soluble. So this is going to be a heterogeneous. You might say it's uniform throughout. Well, a heterogeneous mixture that's kind of uniform throughout is a colloid. So, you, you know, whether or not you call it a heterogeneous or a homogeneous mixture is a little bit uh, pedantic. The, the point is, is that the particles are not dissolved. It's not a, 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 an even mixture. Um, uh, here, we have a homogeneous. So for, a, a, and, and this liquid solid scenario comes up a lot in your chemistry class. So uh, homeo, 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 we're out there, homeo, homogeneous. A homogeneous mixture of a liquid and a solid is going to be called a solution. We'll get to that next. So basically, bottom line, you have lots of kinds of mixtures, and homogeneous are mixed evenly throughout, and heterogeneous are not. Okay, oftentimes heterogeneous, you can see bits. Dig up the soil, you can see all sorts of bits in there. Soil is a heterogeneous mixture of many, many things. All right, so a physical means can separate mixtures. It doesn't matter if it's a homogeneous or a heterogeneous. So, so how do you separate a mixture? Well, it depends on what the mixture is. If it's like a mixture of two liquids, well, you might want to do a distillation, which separates compounds from their boiling points. Um, that's what they do to separate the alcohol from water in the drinks industry. Um, it's what you would use to separate any two liquids that mix. Um, because it's not really easy to separate liquids that mix um, that have different boiling points. Um, you you can uh, so what else is physical means? It's a, any physical means to separate mixtures. And a physical basically means that you're not going to small that change that smallest particle in the substance in either of the substances. Okay, so maybe I have salt water. I could just evaporate the water from the salt, and then I got the salt back. Okay, so my salt's in here, evenly dispersed throughout like lots and lots of blue water. And remember, each blue is an H2O, and the red could be like an Na plus and a Cl minus for sodium chloride. Okay, that when I finish, I get and I boil, boil, and then I I wait, and then I see bits of salt all over the sides of the glass and all the water has entered the atmosphere as vapor. Okay? I think you get the point. So what, what are uh, our substances? We have elements and we have compounds. So we have elements which are, cannot be separated into anything simpler. It's the smallest particle that can take place in a uh, participate in a chemical process is an element. Okay, so you break a compound down into smaller particles. You, or sorry, you break a, 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 an element down into smaller particles. Eventually, you get to a fundamental particle called an atom. Okay, but all of those atoms that you broke down before are the same. Okay, so how do you represent that like schematically? Well, I have this like iron bar. Okay. 
and, and we have uh, Fe for iron, you know, ferrum, okay, is the Latin. So basically, this little things make this iron up. I can break this into smaller pieces of iron, and I keep breaking it and breaking it and breaking it and breaking it. But when I break it, I just get one substance that's, or one atom that is still like all the other atoms. So basically, an element, all the atoms are the same, okay? It's not combined with other kinds of stuff. It's like almost like a letter by itself in the alphabet. A, the word A, and the letter A are the same. So iron and iron, when it has one kind of atom, it ain't got no others. Get it? Good. All right? A compound has two or more different kinds of elements that are combined chemically. Okay, so I can break this compound down into smaller and smaller bits. I can take a glass of water and drink half of it. I got rid of half of the water molecules. Um, I can eventually uh, drink more and get down to a drop. And then I can like sort of, if I possibly could, take all those water molecules away, I'd eventually get down to one particle. But in this case, my one particle that was like all the other waters is made up of two different kinds of atoms, one O and two H's, okay? And so, I, it's not upside down Mickey Mouse, that's just kind of like the way it is. But basically, there's an O and there's two H's stuck to it. And that's the smallest particle. So when you got lots of water, a glass of water, you got lots and lots and lots of those. And I keep taking those away, I get to a simple one, I get down to one that is water. But if I try to pull that apart, it's not a physical means anymore. I'm doing a chemical change. And if I want to pull the H's off the O, that's a chemical change. So when you boil water, you do not pull H's off O's. Okay? You don't pull H's off O's when you boil water. Boiling is a physical change. So each little H2O stays in H2O. Okay? All right? It's made up of two different kinds of elements. Is it pure? Absolutely, it's pure. Okay? I know you were thinking, no, it's not pure. It's, it is pure because all the molecules, all the H2Os look exactly the same. It's pure, but it is not, I, re I repeat, it is not an element. Okay? It's made up of two different kinds of elements, so it's a compound, but it is pure. And ammonia would be a pure substance, but each little molecule has an N, Ooh, this time N will be blue, and uh, black will be H, and three little H's stuck to it. Okay, that's not a bug. It's an NH3. Okay, so each N and the three H's uh, are attached, and so every little unit in a, in, a, in, in a pure ammonia gas has one N and three H's. Is it pure? Yes. Is it a mixture? No. It's not a mixture of N and H. It is a compound of N and H. I cannot separate the N from the H's unless I do some chemical mojo on the ammonia. I can't just boil it and the N's and H's come apart. It doesn't work that way. So that's the difference between sort of the chemical means and the physical means. Glucose, sugar, okay? Each molecule of glucose contains a six carbons, 12 oxygens, sorry, 12 hydrogens and six oxygens. So separating, what happens there? When I melt sugar, am I separating the C's from the H's from the O's? No. Each C6H12O6 stays the same. Okay? If I burn it, then I'm doing a chemical change. Then I can separate the C's from the H's from the O's. Okay? But if I just, or I can rearrange them at least, but if I just melt it, I don't do that. So, summary. Matter can be a mixture, air, or a pure substance, water. A mixture, orange juice, or a pure substance, Iron. If I want to separate a mixture into substances, I do it by physical means. But 
And, and mixtures can be two types. They can be homogeneous, which are uniform throughout. I could see through it for the most part. Heterogeneous, all the bits in the mixtures stay separate. Okay? See? Salt water. Where does it go? No. 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 Ding! Unless you put too much salt in it, it falls to the bottom and then it would be here. Okay? But it's, it's uniform throughout. Okay. How about uh, sand? Mm, no. Sand, mostly silicon dioxide, it's a, it's a compound. Okay. How about uh, iron chloride? Iron chloride, I don't even know what that is. I'm just starting the chemistry. A uh, hint, iron element kind of periodic table. If I look it up, it's there, chloride. Okay. It sounds like it's something that it's a compound. Okay. Um, that Maybe that's not so easy. And you got to study a little more chemistry before you get used to uh, being able to pick that. But if it basically, how do I tell if it's an element? It's on the periodic table. And so your teacher might just ask you to say, identify something as either a homogeneous or heterogeneous mixture, an element, or a compound. And they could do that by actually shoving stuff in front of your nose and asking you to identify it. Or they could actually. Um, tell you to do it by, uh, you know, writing something on your test and saying what, what, what category does this fall into. All right. So three states of matter, solid, liquids, and gases. These cartoons can be really misleading. Keep in mind, the solid could be an element or a mixture, or sorry, it could be an element or a compound, okay, if it's a pure substance. So that means that each of these little spheres could be an element, like iron, if you're talking about iron metal, or it could be a compound, like, for example, benzoic acid, uh, each one of these spheres would be a benzoic acid molecule, and each benzoic acid molecule, which is a solid, would be held together in some fixed arrangement. Particles vibrate about fixed positions. They can't move. So this guy can't move to the other side of the crystal, okay? Not in a solid. So they have fixed shape and volume. Liquids, they slide past one another. They're really close. So these two are very dense states of matter compared to this. All right. So, but these guys move past one another. So it's feasible that this particle could be over here at some later time and vice versa. All right. Um, so because of that, liquids tend to have fixed volume but not fixed shape. They'll take the shape of the container. Gases, which are moving in straight lines until they hit something else, either another molecule or, or, or atom, or the wall of the container, um, that basically means they'll take the shape and the size of the container. So if I double the size of this container by putting an upside down flask on here and then opening it up, um, basically the gas would take up that space. Get it? Fixed shape and volume, fixed volume, not fixed shape, not fixed shape, not fixed volume. Particles vibrate about fixed position. Particles are, dent, are close together but move slide past one another. And that could be a molecule, right? That, that, that could be a, an NH3. Um, this and here, the molecules or the atoms uh, move in straight line directions. You know, I promised to get to uh, mass, but I'm not going to get to it in this video. Uh, physical chemical change doesn't alter the composition or the identity of the substance. It is a physical change. So basically, changes in state, dissolving, they're, they're physical changes. Chemical change will alter the substance. So here, ooh, element mixture compound. I could ask, is this on the left-hand side of the arrow, an element, a mixture, or a compound? Well, on the left-hand side, we have, this is made up of only one kind of atom, assuming these two little white guys are the same. These white uh, atoms are stuck together. So this is a molecule of an element, because it's made of one kind of atom, 
This is a molecule of an element. This is the same element. This is a molecule of a different element. So this is a mixture of elements, probably a, homo a homogeneous mixture. Um, it's, these are re represent hydrogen. Let me label them for you. Um, so there's an H and an H and an H and an H. So that's like a H2 a plus uh, a two of them. And then this is an O and an O and O2. And then on this side, there is a chemical reaction that makes it uh, water. So on this side, I have a pure substance. Look at that. Every particle is the same. So I took a mixture of elements and I did some chemical reaction on it and I got a compound. And I got two H2O molecules. Okay. Is the left side pure? No. It's not. It's a mixture of elements. Okay. The hydrogen, the, it's a homogeneous mixture of elements. Is the right side pure? Yes. It is a compound. Okay, all the units are the same. So when I do that process, when I burn hydrogen in the presence of oxygen, I get water molecules. That's a chemical change because I've altered the structure of these guys. Okay, a physical change doesn't. When I melt ice, I start with H2O and I finish with H2O. You get it? Good. If you don't, ask your teacher questions. Okay, um, mass versus weight. Whew. We're almost there. I don't know if you could hang out for the whole 26 minutes. A long time. Okay. Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. Mass, we, uh, the SI unit of mass is the kilogram. We don't do uh, English system of mass. The English system of mass is the slug. Um, the uh, SI unit of weight is a newton. Okay. And the difference between mass and weight is mass is how much stuff you have. It's a, it's a measure of how much matter you have, okay? How much uh, uh, stuff makes up that hydrogen atom. That's mass. Weight is how hard is gravity pulling that object towards the Earth, okay? Or whatever is the nearest planet. So that's why your weight changes from planet to planet, okay? Uh, so here's the difference, okay? Here's you, a happy high school student, and you're on the Earth, which is big. Now, you're made up of stuff. How much stuff depends on how much you ate for lunch and how big your parents were and how much you go to the gym. But you are made up of relatively a fixed quantity of stuff. Okay? Your mass is the same everywhere because how much stuff makes you up doesn't change if you're on the Earth or on the Moon or on Mars. But if you go to the Moon, which is smaller than the Earth, Okay, if you go to the moon, which is smaller than the earth, you stay the same. You are made up of the same stuff you were made up on earth. Okay, your mass hasn't changed because how much matter you have hasn't changed. But because the gravitational force the moon exerts on you is much smaller than the earth, your weight is less on the moon. Okay, I, I, I don't know what happened in space-time here that caused your body to be smushed here. Let me fix that. I'm sorry to do that to you. I'm watching 25 minutes of video, the least I can do is keep you in one piece. All right, so I think you get the drift of the difference between Earth, or between mass and weight. Mass is how much stuff you're made up of. Weight is how hard gravity is pulling on you. Uh, how how hard you are being attracted to the nearest planet, pretty much. Um, uh, that's the difference. Hopefully, what did I want you to get out of this video? I wanted you to get out of what's an element, mixture, and compound? What's a solid, liquid, and gas? What's a chemical change? What's a physical change? Good luck. 
hope to make more videos.